Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, that guy leering down at us is Chuck Farnham. Hi, Chuck. Hey, buddy. Yeah. How are right. you? I'm okay. How you doing? I'm all right. Yeah, Everything's he, good. Last, last time we talked to him, he had a gallbladder removed by a spider. We won't go into that again. Hey, it was fun. Huh? Matter of fact, I'm going to send you, I'll send you videos so you can watch. Videos of what? But we'll have the spider works. Wait a minute! You, did you? Did they make a video of your procedure? They they make videos of all the procedures, but there's one online that I can send you. And and, and yeah, be good. S- send it to me. I would like to. I'd like to see the little spider going to work and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's what it is. So how's everything? It's the almost fall now. Well, I've uh, I've been going through. Um, 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 what do you call it? Sure. Physical, physical therapy. Really? Well, because I've been having this trouble walking. You know, Me too. And, and I'm afraid of... Uh, falling? Uh, afraid of falling. I have this great I've fear of falling now. And so I don't like to go out and walk. I'm afraid to. All right. You have so a pain? The PT is to make me feel a better sense of balance, to exercise my legs, to do all of that. Right? Yeah. So I'm doing this. I've been doing this for, uh, p- 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 I'd say, four weeks now. And every day, like, I'm religious about it. I do my exercises at home. Well, the other day I did the exercises at home, and then Marjorie and I went out for a walk. I could barely walk a block. It's not gotten better. It's gotten worse. So I just stopped well, doing all the PT because it was suggested to me by somebody that the reason it might have been difficult for me to walk is I had done my exercises that day, and it might have weakened my legs. Well, so, I mean, I don't know what it is, but I'm not doing the exercises at home. I'm sorry. I, you know. Yeah, I'm, I can't ride my bike anymore, I've been told. What well, you've been told? You can yeah, <laughs> the people the people in charge of me at the house, um, the little woman and the, and Junior, have decided that I things I can't do. If something falls on the floor, I am not to pick it up. If something, if I want to ride my bike, the answer is no, because I've fallen a couple of times, and I got a I I caused a, a, a like hematoma on my kidney hmm. and all this other stuff. So now they no picking stuff up, no riding the bike. Because they don't want to see me ride the bike. Why can't you pick but why can't you pick stuff up? I once I start bending over, I just keep going. Oh really? So I'm face planting into the you know, well, I've gained. I've get, I had a lot of weight for a while, and I got rid of sixty pounds of it. And now I've gained back about maybe twenty five. Okay, so that be, could be causing part of the reason why it's difficult for me to walk. I mean, just the weight is enough to do it. However, uh, the reason I gained the weight was because I had the prostate operation, and then they gave right. me then I I have pills for my uh, neuropathy and so on, and all these things combined put weight back on me in spite of the fact that I wasn't eating any more or less than I was eating before. Before. You know. So uh, uh, I just, you know, I've kind of given up on trying to lose weight, you know. So, I mean, I'm not really fat, but um, I'm, uh, there's enough there that I have, it's harder for me to walk. But You're not in the Farnham zone of fat. Oh, no, no. How much do you weigh now? 
325. 325, okay. I'm probably 225. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I uh my my leg slash problem is I've got three crushed discs in my back. Three what? So, uh, so I my crushed discs. Oh, I see. My three my three lower discs are crushed. They it's it's a fascinating X ray to look at, according to the doctor. And so I can go a certain distance, but after that. It's over. Well, why don't they? I, just, why, why don't you have it operated on? You got insurance. We've determined that in the last episode. <laughs> um, I'm afraid of back surgery because my cousin had it multiple times, and they they tell you that if you have a neck problem, no problem, we can fix it. If you have a lower back problem, we can't guarantee you're going to fix it. Well, if you can't guarantee me, you're going to fix me marjorie Mar marjorie has a bad back the doctors said yeah. you probably should have an operation but she he he kept saying if you don't want it fine if you think you can live without it fine better that than do an operation right okay uh and now she feels she's too old to do an operation because her healing powers are not what they once were right Exactly. I mean, I love it. As an older person, in case you haven't noticed, folks, I'm 84 years old. I will be 85 in December. December? Yeah. Uh, you may look at me and go, Alex, you know, you're, you know. Um, and the fact is that they, they don't want to do a lot of things when you're my age. Like, um, right. When I went to the hospital for the uh, for the uh, prostate seeds, usually they put you out, and I love it when they put you out because they give you propofol, and and it just in that millisecond before you pass out, you feel just wonderful. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, they wouldn't give it to me. I said no pro, no. You, we prefer not to do that. You know, if we were doing a major, major operation, yeah, we'd have to. But in your case, we're going to give you a spinal, and you'll just be numb from the bottom down. So, okay. I mean, they did that. They said you're too, old, you're too old to go with the propofol, or, or we don't want to take a chance on it. Okay. On you not waking up. Yeah. Yeah. So they gave me that, Michael, and Michael I got to tell you, the uh, you say spinal, and you go, "Wow, that's got to hurt." I didn't even feel it. They put this thing on my back. There was a little bit of something, and then I was literally numb from the waist down. Wow! And when I woke up, uh, not when I woke up, when they got me out of there. And the thing is, the trouble with it is, they don't put you out. So guess what happens when they don't put you out? You hear everything that's going on in the operating room. Oh, that can't be good. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't want to. Because you're not, you're not, you, you're not used to that. You know, you're used to not you knowing. You don't see the work. You don't hear the work going on. You're not at the construction site. Little things like, so what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I don't know. And he's meanwhile he's doing this thing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we may go to the beach. Oh well, that's good. That's always nice. And they're having these just general <laughs> conversations about stuff. Uh, occasionally I'd hear him go, uh-oh, you know, which you kind of, you don't yeah, want to hear uh-oh during, but anyway, so I didn't, I wasn't put out during the procedure, so now they wheel me down to the recovery room, and everybody who's been in having stuff is getting up and walking out, because they got put out, and now they're awake, and they get up and walk out. Meanwhile, I'm dead from the waist down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're telling me it, it may take several hours. And I, there's nothing, have, have you ever been put out from the waist down? Yeah. No. It's very frustrating. I have a Looks friend like you don't have named legs. Patrick, and he's a paraplegic, and now I know how he feels. I mean, yeah. obviously he doesn't recover after the stuff wears off, you know. But for three hours, right. I'm just, I'm flailing around. I can't feel anything below my waist. I'm, and they mm -hmm. won't let me leave the hospital, of course, until I can go take a pee. 
Yeah, that's that's always the. Uh, now I have enough trouble standard. doing in a bottle when they ask me. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? So they 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 finally I felt I could get up and walk to the bathroom. So I get up and I stumble to the bathroom because I just want to get home. You right. Know, if I'm gonna, if, if if you want me to recover the best possible way, just let me go home. Okay. That's that's what I told them with the the gallbladder thing. I said they kept going. Your heart rate's too low. Your heart rate's too low. I go. My heart rate will be just fine if you can get me to my house. And they're like, they sent me home with uh, oxygen tanks and stuff. Really? They said you need oxygen. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I go, when was the last time you guys calibrated equipment here? Well, it's kind of cool like, breathing. Well, we don't know. Yeah, but it's kind of cool, cool breathing oxygen. Right, but I don't want to be that guy. I mean, that's a step down in your uh, daily habit if you've got, you know, a tank hooked to your face all the time. Well, I don't want one well, of those. I sent it, well, here, I sent here's it what's away. happening. We're going to Europe, right? And I'm going to Marjorie. I'm saying, right. I got to walk through airports. And then I remember, of course, yeah. most airports have escalators. And then once you get off the escalator, there's the moving sidewalk. No, they they'll give a they get a guy and he'll push you through the airport. Well, they have guys for that now. Marjorie has ordered up a wheelchair for me. Yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm all about I, I the wanna, mobility I don't want to do the wheelchair. That's giving up. No, no, that's getting you to the plane so you can go somewhere and have fun. Well, I'm going to have to walk there. I bet Marjorie's looking into that already. Oh, well, she figures we can take a car. We can rent a car for a day. See, we got all this sure. fuck you money now, so we can order a car for a day, and he can just drive us around and wait. Right. You know Exactly. So, Why not? So we might do that. You know, what the hell? I'm a big fan How much of could it cost? Part. A couple hundred bucks? Big deal. You know? Yeah. I don't, when I go to the grocery store. Excuse me, a couple you know, hundred people, francs? Yeah. You know, I use the mobility carts at the grocery store. Do if you? They're, if they're, like, yeah, if Walmart is too big, I can't get to the milk without my back going crazy. Oh, well, that's you, but I'm I'm not that far gone. You know, well, and I you, don't want to admit 20 that on I me. need a goddamn wheelchair to get me somewhere. I disagree. I bet you do. Hmm? I bet you do. And trust me, if she says you do, you, you no, do. No, she's worried that I do. Right. You know. I'd be worried, too. You're going a long ways. You know, you I have have, to, I have, you I'm know. using a cane now, and I try not to okay. use it when I'm walking. I try to walk without it. I kind of lift it up and don't use it. But, <laughs> you know, I use a cane, and that was, you know. I, but what happens is I've gotten used to it. and That's the problem. Okay. So I, you know, I I should have kept resisting a, 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 a cane, but the minute I took like my third fall in so many years, uh, I right. just decided I better carry a cane. So I carried a cane and I fell again and fell flat on my face. And of course, people yeah. have seen the pictures of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah. Yeah, I got some canes here too. I don't use them, but I don't feel stable enough with them. You don't feel what? Stable enough with the cane. Really? I feel more stable walking well, they, than I do. They with tell the cane. me they have the canes, you know, with the with the this this thing, you know? Right. Right? And I should yeah. get one of those. And I'm going, that's really giving up. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's like when I see somebody with those. I realize that you know I'm not that bad, but I'm going to go to my uh, my PT people this week and say I didn't do any of the exercises, and the reason is is that I I did them and then I went out and took a walk and I could barely get down the block. It's only gotten worse. So if you want to do something that's going to make me feel better, fine. But if you don't think you can, then what am I doing all this for? You know, and I'm not right. being I'm not. You know, they may be treating me for something that I don't have, you know. 
Because the PT people aren't right. doctors. The PT people get the prescription from the doctor that says, please do this for my for my patient. Yeah, rub his leg here, do the other his leg there. Yeah. yeah. Like, have you noticed that all our conversations now are are nothing but medical discussions? Well, that's uh, but if, if somebody, a friend of my wife said at lunch one day, did you realize that when we all get together, all it turns into is an organ recital. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I go to lunch with these guys, then it's a constant, uh, oh, you just got out, oh, you got in, oh, you've got this, oh, you've got that. You know, maybe I should just change this whole show to a show for old people where we sit here and talk, just talk about this stuff. You know? Right, and maybe what we, what we should do is get uh, white coats, we could wear those. I mean, Marjorie, we, like, we were uh, at the restaurant the other day, and she says, you're so grouchy today. And I said, you'd be grouchy, too, if you couldn't walk a block. Yeah. You yeah, know, I said, I'm just getting depressed about this because, quite frankly, I should be getting better, not worse. And yeah. I'm worse, not better. I've got, I've got restaurants that I won't go to because they have stairs. Really? To get into them. Oh, stairs yeah, don't yeah, bother me because as long as you have a banister... You know. Right. Well, out here, you know, there's a, a standard gate to make stairs. Well, apparently in the state of Nevada, they gave that up. Gave because what? the gate, the gates for stairs are notoriously different from one place to another. What do you mean the gate? So the, 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 the amount of space that you have to walk up. I see. Okay. So, so what happens is. You have muscle memory in your legs, and the muscle memory in your legs is from you going upstairs your entire life, right? Your brain goes, oh, look, there are stairs, and it helps you go up the stairs because your brain knows the gate. Well, all these stairs around here are all different. So your brain thinks it's a standard gate when you see when it sees stairs, but the reality is maybe it's two or three inches shorter or two or three inches longer, and you fall flat on your face walking up the stairs. I've done it too many times. So now I'm like scared of stairs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I find with stairs, I can do them okay if, uh, as long as they have a, they don't have a banister. Uh, they scare me. You know, yeah, where's, yeah. The, where's the elevator? You know. Mm -hmm. Same problem. Yeah. God, we're old. Well, I, I don't have the, uh, and the trouble is I don't have the balance. So what they're trying to do with all these right. PT things is trying to help me create my balance, which I think I'll keep doing the balance ones. But the ones that are supposed to strengthen my legs, eh, that, does, that doesn't seem to work. And it seems to make things, things worse. When you're yeah. walking, do you, do you look down a lot? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. I try I mean, not to look all... down a lot because I can then get lightheaded and I have this balance problem. Yep, I, uh, I do the same thing. I'm like, I have to check the ground and look forward to make sure that I'm not going to well, trip on myself. There was one day, a couple, many years ago, maybe five years ago, where I was going down the subway and I grabbed onto the railing of the banister, right? Sure. And I said to myself, when did I start doing this? Because I found I was doing it all the time. And somehow there's a point in your life where your balance starts going off enough that you start grabbing the rail on the subway. Right. And so uh, that's the time I, you know, my feet started going numb about 10 years ago. Yeah, mine do too. Yeah. My, matter of fact, my left foot is completely numb right now. Hey, folks, I know you. I know you feel this is like. Uh, what are they talking about this stuff again? It's it's Dr. Dean Adele. I'm I'm going on ninety five. I should be talking about this stuff, and the only problem yeah. is is that in this society, there's nobody that talks back and answers your questions properly. That's All they do, with the, and you say, well, what does your neurologist do? He just gives me another pill that makes right. me woozy. Yeah, you know, it's a great sleeping pill. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I, in the morning, I'm lightheaded, you know. And, of course, I, I'm going to be lightheaded. It's only eight hours since I took the pill. 
Right. But their attitude is, oh, you're yeah. 85. You, we could give you heroin. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I got my doctor gave me three hundred a prescription for three hundred Vicodin every forty five days. Three hundred. Three hundred Vicodin? I'm like Yeah. I'm like, when am I gonna poop here, dude? You're He's never like, gonna poop well, again. Yeah, you're like never <laughs> it's like I'm like, I can't do this. Three hundred Vicodin how three, many every how many days? Forty five days. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. No, it did not. 45 Me either. Days, I'm like, no, days. no, no. At 45 days, 45 days is 90. He's giving you like six a day or something. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. crazy. Wow, I wish I were at your place. Well, I mean, I was in a lot of pain, but, you know, it's like there's got to be some other solution to this than that many Vicodin. Well, there's got to be other. Yes, exactly. But how old is Chuck Farnham now? How old are you? Six, six Oh, you're 66. 66. You're not even that old. With me, they don't care what they give you. They could give you heroin, and they don't care. No, the doc said, he goes, he goes, I go, are you going to have trouble with this prescription? He goes, I show your x-rays to anybody. They'll they'll, they'll okay end-of-life drugs for you. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I'm like, dude, come on. I walked in. He goes, I'm just telling you. What are that end, wait, 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 what are is, the end of life drugs? Well, it's probably I'd probably get morphine in a pill. Yeah. Or maybe they just send it home to you. Morphine is them. not as dangerous though as uh what do you call it? The the, the drug they're all talking Fentanyl? About. Fentanyl. You know, and No, it, and morphine, man, morphine works. If you got a problem, It'll fix it. Well, I think it, were we talk, when were we talking about this? I think not when we were doing a thing like this, but when we were talk, just talking to each other. And I mentioned that if you go to the hospital and they tell you you need morphine because you've got a lot of pain, you know, they're oh, going to yeah. ask you on a scale of 1 to 10, yep. how bad is your pain? Now, Secret it could number. be that the pain is only a six, but no, never no, no. say that. The pain that. is an eight. Huh? Pain is an eight. Pain is an eight. Pain is an eight. Yeah. Pain is an eight. And if next you thing you know, pain, you're off to La La Land. <laughs> right, right. The, all the hospitals and doctors and nurses all got together. You'll get Vicodin at a six. You'll get morphine at an eight. What do you get as, at a three? A glass of water? No, you probably get uh, acetaminophen or, you know, Tylenol. Tylenol, yeah. yeah. Probably goes Tylenol, Vicodin, morphine. Wow, yeah. But I know that number is eight. Oh, I love the morphine. I, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, morphine became my pal. And by the way, I had pain, so it did make the pain go away. But then after oh, a yeah. while, well, I, I, I just wanted the morphine, <laughs> you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah no, you'll... The guy goes, we're just, you know, I go, that morphine really works. He goes, the morphine doesn't do anything. It just makes sure that you can't remember you're hurting. <laughs> that's what well, it that's does. really what it does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I all, all it's stuff. meant to do is be a painkiller, and you kill, can kill pain by right. telling your brain you don't have any pain. You know? Yeah, it works for you so well. Yeah. I mean, but, I yeah. don't think there's anything that kills pain, is there? It's just stuff that no. makes you. No, it's hiding the fact that you've got the problem. It's wow. not fixing anything. Yeah. Yeah, this. It's a, so anyway, so the, the, the little hints there, folks. I don't know if uh, YouTube is going to say you're giving out medical information, but we're not really. We're saying if you're in the hospital and they say what's your pain level, make sure you say it's high. Otherwise, you won't get enough to take care of the pain. Right. That eight number will come in handy if you're laying there. You'll just remember this conversation and go, I think my number's eight. Yeah, yeah. Well, you I don't want to be a yeah. 10. You don't want to be a 10, and you definitely don't want to be a six. Well, in my case, they so, don't care what I do. They don't, you know, they, they don't give a... a <laughs> me, me neither anymore because I have the, uh, I carry the x-ray around with me and go, hey, check this out. Oh, Whoa. yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, we, we're here. Here's some end-of-life drugs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. How did you even get here? Yeah. 
Well, you know, I, all I'm taking is pregabalin, which it, it helps with the, the neuropathy, but not, nothing really helps. I, I, doctors are bogus. I have a doctor who wants me to go back in and have another lung CT scan because they found some spots the last time. Well, those spots have been there. One of them's been there since 2016, and the other one right. is a kind of spot that even if it enlarges, it's no big deal because it's just the kind that is never malignant. So what are you sending right. me back for another CT scan for? You know? Right. Why waste Nothing my... worse. Huh? There's nothing worse than the hospital. Oh, last time they couldn't get me in. I told them that you were not going to be able to get me in a, uh, uh, what's that? Not MRI. Yeah, an MRI machine. Yeah. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, we can get you in there. We got elephants we can put in these things now. And I'm like, now he's comparing me to an elephant. Oh, that's very nice. And, and, and the uh, MRI woman comes up to the room, and she has a tape measure. And she starts measuring around my stomach. And I go, what are you doing? She goes, they told me you could fit in the MRI machine. I suggested no way. And, and she goes, there's no freaking way you can get in that MRI machine. No way at all. We'll burn your sides when we wedge you in the we, We've run out of time here, but this is getting too good. <laughs> it's just weird. It was weird. And I'm like, really? And she's got the tape measure. Well, I feel also, like I'm getting... Also, do you really have to be that insulting with me? Uh, you, know? Yeah, you know? No, I already know I'm a big, you know, big fat guy. But, and she goes, I go, I told him. And she goes, yeah. There's no way you could fit in that machine. Wow. Wow. So I go, I thought you could do elephants. She goes, yeah. At a, a you know, circus hospital, we could do an elephant, but not here. Not here. So we're sending you over to the circus. Yeah, we'll hospital. send you to Barnum and Bailey to get your x ray. <laughs> like, oh. with that, I think we'll close for this time. Another another uh, hot uh, medical discussion. Let's talk, let's talk again soon. Anytime, buddy. Bye -bye. Take care of yourself. Bye. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there he goes. Uh, our good friend, um, um, uh, uh, Chuck Farnham. Uh, let me just uh, make a few adjustments here. Yeah, I have to make a few adjustments so everything's fine. Okay, there we go. Hey, how are you? I'm uh, I'm popping out of the frame here. Let me uh, let me bring myself into the frame. See, these are things that I if I had somebody who worked with me, some somebody who was like doing all of this, I wouldn't have to do it all myself. Yeah. See, see how I bounce around there and I'm up and down. What happens is I have a seat here and I get into the seat. And when I get into the seat, I'm like this, right? But then if I'm sitting long enough, I, I start to sink more into it. And I so then I have to readjust it. So what the hell? What do you know? Hey, here are a bunch of people waiting to come on. I can't believe this. Uh, it, it, it must be because, uh, well, we had these people yesterday anyway. Uh, here, here we go. They're coming on. There's uh, there's uh, Jeff and there's uh, Alan and there's uh, Charlie and there's Josh. Everybody's here tonight. Hail, hail! The gang's all here. Hi, gang. How are you? Good, great. Okay, good. Well, anyway, um, are you all getting anxious now? Mm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hey, it's gonna be what it is. You know. Uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, I mean, well, I said this before to Marjorie last time that uh, Trump became president that, uh, Hey, you know, we're a pretty strong country. We can take four years of a bad president, you know, but I'm beginning to wonder if we can, Josh, what do you think? You're, you're a student of history. Well, I think we can, and we always have, you mm -hmm. know, but. I think he presents immense dangers and challenges that make the fact that we even have to ask the question incredibly concerning, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I know, you know a million again, people that didn't make it through the last four years of Trump. You know, I'm just saying that I'm not so incredibly naive as to believe nothing could ever touch our republic because even the people that created our republic didn't believe that. You you know? I mean, they thought that it would be destined for failure in less than a generation. If it survived past that, we were lucky. You know? Charlie brought up a point here. It's a very good point. And they haven't really made a big deal out of it in this campaign. Is that Trump is really responsible for about a million deaths in this country from COVID because he didn't handle the crisis properly. Yeah, no, they're and, and more so, worried about, you know, playing games on television with the former governor mm-hmm. of New York, you know, who I don't necessarily know did a perfect job either, but who did do a perfect job? I mean, it, it, you know. Well, but all I'm saying well, is, is that why haven't the why haven't the Democrats made a big deal out of the fact that uh, that uh, Trump handled COVID so badly? I mean, this was the one kind of situation that a president is in charge of and can mm. turn around and he didn't do anything about it. Oh, this is going to um, go away like a bad cold, you know? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing maybe one of the reasons that they're not is because I found through personal experience that there were a number of issues within the COVID situation that a lot of people didn't agree with like mask mandates or vaccine mandates and things like that and they didn't always they were not easily put into a political camp for example so i think they're worried that broaching some of those issues might hurt them not only uh in trying to get votes from the other side but could make people apprehensive that were already on their side you know because i mean i know plenty of people that probably can't stand trump won't vote for him, will vote for Harris, but thought mask mandates or vaccine mandates were an incredibly stupid idea, hated the idea of it. And if you start bringing it up and it's coming from the Harris campaign, they might roll their eyes and think twice. I'm saying that's my guess, you know. I'm not saying who I think is right, who I think is wrong. I'm saying that was my observation. Well, you know, I mean, you can argue whether the masks did any good. I personally believe they did, okay? Uh, I think that if, let, let's say they only did a minor amount of good, they did some good, mm-hmm. you know, there was a, and I think through the mask mandates and the fact that we pushed ahead with a, uh, uh, with a, uh, 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 vaccine and things mm-hmm. like that, you know, and that was all done under the Democrats. Finally, it was done mm-hmm. under Biden. Biden was president when we okayed yeah. the, um, yeah. the, uh, uh, the vaccines, Mm-hmm. Those things kind of turn the whole thing around. Okay, I mean, we've got, still got a problem, but it's not the same problem. And let's say you come down with COVID, chances are you're not going to die from it. You know, you go and you get the Paxlovid and things like that. And there's mm-hmm. uh, an updated vaccine that supposedly takes care of a lot of this. So mm-hmm. people aren't dying like they were. They're still getting sick with it, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I, so I, 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 I just think that we, we should have made a big deal out of the fact that under his watch, millions of people died as a result of it, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm not, you know, like I said, I don't really have a huge opinion on who was wrong or right. I'm just saying that's one of my guesses as to why Char- they might Char- not Charlie, be Charlie, how, how many people died uh, under COVID in, in America? Well, last time I saw it was one million three hundred thousand, but they don't post those numbers anymore. So right. yeah, they don't post them any longer, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh... I just I just thought that might be one of the reasons. You know, it's just because there were some details within that situation that weren't always very well tied to your political party affiliation. You know, like I said, I knew a lot of Democrats you know, who were incredibly uncomfortable with the fact they were being forced to wear a mask in public or something like that. You know, union people, you, you know, I mean, people who were very strong Democratic voters, you know, and mm-hmm. um, uh, maybe they're afraid that it'll turn those people off. It's it's almost like they just don't see where it hurts Trump without also hurting them, maybe, or something along those lines, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they have data that says that, you know, they've looked into it, polling or something like that. You know, I mean, typically, I mean, it, until Trump, 
you know, political campaigns were pretty scientifically run, <laughs> you know, apparatuses, right? You know, mm -hmm. or so, and then he comes along and just then just kind of does whatever he wants. But I, th I think the Harris campaign is still sort of running that way that mm -hmm. they don't say or do anything that they haven't already pre-calculated as what it will either gain them or cost them. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Alan? So do masks do any good? Um, if you're wearing one and I'm wearing one, we're protecting each other. And let, let's go back 100 years to the Spanish-American flu. They didn't have vaccines. What stopped it? Masks. Well, one thing one, one thing that did stop it too was the fact that there was a pause in the in the war. Yeah, but the but by then it wasn't only people that were in the war that were getting it. Everybody was getting it. The the Oh, um, but of course everybody was getting it because it was coming back here. Right. But yeah, except for after it got here it transmitted to three other people and yeah, well, all people. I'm saying is that you have a soldier, he's over there, he comes back, he gives it to somebody, you know? Yeah, it was, it was, it, okay, anyhow. Wait, but, what, but, what, are you, what are you saying, Josh? You, you had a what? No, I was, I watched something on TV, you're oh. sorry. <laughs> I see. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, the other thing is that people don't believe in masks. Next time they have surgery where the doctor opens you up, ask them not to wear a mask. Yeah. You know, I mean. It was, a very, it was a very simple solution uh, to a problem. Uh, it was one which was effective. Okay. And some people say, well, that didn't do anything to stop it. Well, I'm sorry. It, it, it certainly didn't hurt to do it. Okay. Right. You know, and why didn't you Asian want masks? countries like Japan and Korea wore masks all the time, and they had a minor, I'm mean, just a microscopic number of deaths compared to the U.S. Well, he, Part of the uh, reason also, they it, wore masks, of course, was because they're used to it because of the air pollution there. No, no, yeah. it's not air pollution. It's If they get a cold, they will wear a mask to work. You know, uh, masks mm -hmm. are used traditionally over there to help prevent, you know, disease, colds, things like that, you know. So, right. I mean, uh, it wasn't just uh, a, a, a thing here, you know, that it, it, but it, 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 it in other countries, it's been quite traditional to use masks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the reason maybe it didn't come up in the campaign is because it's not a pandemic anymore. It's what's known as endemic. And endemic is like the flu. Now, this summer was a caught caught a lot of people off guard but this this summer's covid maybe wouldn't happen if people continued to get shots in the the december of or january uh, i guess or february whatever it was of 2024 they said that only about 23 percent of the people according to the cdc got covid vaccines that were eligible so a lot more people are going to spread oh, well, a lot more well, COVID. Definitely the amount of people that are getting uh, vaccines now is down because people have become complacent. That's right. You know, Absolutely. and if you become too complacent, it's going to get bad again. It's going to go like it was this summer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. but, but we do have the medicine to kind of, not as many people would die now. Game changer. Game you don't changer. even need to be vaccinated for Paxlovid to work. Yeah, it, and in fact, that's most people who take Paxlover to the people who didn't get vaccinated. Although I've been vaccinated, every time that I could get a vaccination, I got it. All right, yeah. and I still came down with with uh, uh, COVID well, three times, I think. You know, but I'm group, not dead. You know? Our group, the group of over sixty, I, I think Josh is under that, but in any case, our group of over sixty are the highest death rates of COVID still. Oh, yeah. Even the people that are vaccinated and even the people that use uh, Paxlovid are still dying of COVID. Mm -hmm. well, you, can, you, can go, you can go online on the CDC's website and they'll give you the numbers, but they don't broadcast it anymore because they aren't the big numbers that they were. So. Well, we should still be careful and we should still take care Absolutely. of it and we should still be proactive. And, uh, you know, but... 
I mean, all I remember is that Donald Trump was stood up there and said, gee, do you think we can take, uh, like, uh, uh, maybe put uh, uh, black light inside the body <laughs> and kill it? Right, How about if we take with, with UV and, and bleach and, and what, some uh, of the uh, drugs that he was trouting? They've actually, some of the drugs that he mentioned, they've actually done studies now that they have ha had time in the past couple of years. And they weren't. They didn't do it. What was that one? Ivermectin or what was it called? Um, Ivermectin was one. Ivermectin, yeah. yeah. And they they still they're selling that yeah. on these right wing television channels. Well, you in, yeah. in this country you need a prescription for it, but or you can go down and get wasn't a dog that a, collar. Wasn't that an animal, but wasn't that an animal drug? Ivermectin. Um, it is. It's mainly used in animals. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, so, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess all those MAGA people will wind up dying from it. So, you know, mm. not going to okay. feel sorry. And you ought to send them all a flea collar. A lot of flea collars have ivermectin mm. in it. Do they kills really? Flea. Yeah, it kills fleas and it kills ticks. And well, what does it do to you if you take it? <laughs> well, they actually have pharmaceutical grade. Like if you get, if you got, to, not to get real crazy here but if you got scabies and the and the, the normal stuff the cream that you put on doesn't kill them mm -hmm. uh, is they're immune to it for some reason and i don't understand all that but who gets scabies um, then, anymore? then they give you ivermectin for a week or two but it's a very low dose because the human body doesn't well, deal wait a minute well. wait a minute who, who gets scabies anymore i don't know people that go to bed with strangers what? I don't even. I can't what? even remember what scabies was. I just knew that it was around. It's like for crabs, while. except for they're microscopic. Oh, okay. If you say and so. They spread all over your body and they itch like crazy. So. Okay. Oh. I've never had them. So. Well, I've had crabs. I mean, you know, you go to San Francisco, yeah. get fresh crab. Yeah, I've had yeah. crabs with tartar sauce. At uh, uh, Pier Thirty Nine, I like the cocktail sauce better. But anyhow, yeah, so. you like the cocktail sauce? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jeff, you raised your hand, or you just yeah. So my my doctor recommends for me to wait until like December or oh, January for for my medications because they figure that's the time when when the diseases are going to be around there. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, if you get a flu shot today or you get mm -hmm. a, 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 what do you call it, COVID shot COVID. today, it'll be good through the winter, you know, yeah. easily. Yeah. And usually about six months. Yeah. And at our age, they're recommending that, that, that somebody over 60, I guess, or whatever, it changes all the time gets two of them a year actually i think now they're only doing one a year they they found oh. the latest the latest vaccination is more powerful you know okay but i don't know what do i know and don't take any of this as medical advice folks that's Listen. right we're just talking we're just talking <laughs> none none of us really know anything we, about medicine well so. all i'm saying is i would say get a covid shot that Absolutely. i would say but the last time I made a big deal about people going in and getting a COVID shot, they, they demonetized me. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? The last time uh, I said, I'm to go get a COVID shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hmm? So you lost 55 cents that day. I lost 55 yeah. cents that day. No, they actually threatened to take me off. Really? Yes. We're spreading false uh, medical information. Um, but but it wasn't false. Yeah. So, uh, did you raise your? They perceive it. Did you raise your hand again, Jeff? Yeah. So if I can switch the discussion a little bit, I got to talk to a friend of mine in Maine, who's a lobster fisherman, and he's kind of a senior guy. He's really about ready to give it up mm -hmm. on everything, but he he just started about the about the president and Trump and all of that. And he goes, well, I don't like Trump anyway, but I'm probably going to vote for him. I absolutely hate this lady. 
And he went into a politic stuff, like, like he'd like to kill her. And Why? What, 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 is, what is onerous about Kamala? If anything, between she and Walls, I could get, I could get diabetes for crying out loud. They're so sweet. You know? I can't believe this, but that's it. He just wouldn't stop. Yeah, I would cross this guy off the Hanukkah list, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, well, I just don't see, you see, I, maybe it's just me, but I don't see how anybody can find Kamala Harris objectionable. I think by now we're all a little tired of both of them, to be honest with you, because well, we're that's just exhausted. All right, dude, I think I agree, but when he got on the phone, I got, holy shit. He's like, he wants to go over and get a gun out there and shoot him. <laughs> Maybe he's got lobster fever. Uh, what does he? What does she do? That she hates? That he hates her so much. Did he say why he hated her? No. What was it? Immigration. Oh, immigrants. Immigrants. Oh, taking all of her jobs. She had nothing to do with that. Crime. You know. Yeah. You know what to tell anybody who brings up the immigrant situation is it's a false fear. Okay, it's an absolutely false fear. It is a false fear created by Donald Trump so that people will feel like the the you know the the the, the bastions are at the gates and they're going to come tear it down and they're going to take your jobs and rape your wives and they're going to do all of that. I mean, if you listen to Trump, that's that's pretty much the message. Yeah. And as I said last night, the fact is the reality of the immigrant situation is that we could take in another 10 million immigrants and we wouldn't feel it in this country particularly. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're a rather large country with a lot of jobs in this country and a lot of jobs that need filling that normal people won't do, but immigrants will do, okay? You, uh, get, you get the immigrants in the Central Valley here in California. There's pesticides, herbicides that they're spraying, and these people will still work on picking the fruit and the lettuce and everything, and we wouldn't do it. No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, I mean, I, as, I'm it's not worried I, anyway because they're they're taking black jobs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> white, so. Right, right. You know, at, 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 rib, at rib joints, huh? Yeah, why did the reporters ask Trump what he meant by that? <laughs> they're going to be all upset about the Biden you know. talk, calling them garbage people at, at the uh, Madison Square Garden. I think uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a thing the other night where we went out to the street and talked to black people to have them define what black jobs are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I sent a joke around and it had a picture of Trump riding in the uh, trash truck and the little caption from a friend of mine said, isn't he in the wrong end of the truck? <laughs> well, did you see? did you see the video of him trying to get into the truck? No. There's something wrong with that guy. Yeah, he is definitely <laughs> not all there. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong with him, you know. As somebody who's suffering from, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, various neurological problems, uh, I, I can say he definitely had one there. I mean, I wouldn't have trouble pulling on the door of the cab, <laughs> you know. Well, let, me help, let, me, let me help you, Mr. Trump. Open the door. Oops, you missed the handle. I'm sorry. Did you fall on your face? What other political candidate, you know, gets rides around in a garbage truck and gets in and says, you know, I'm going to ride around this garbage truck because our country's a trash can and our, my political opponent's garbage. I mean, like any other time and place, people would be like, what? Well, you know, I said it last <laughs> night and I'll say it again. What? The trouble with the campaign right now is it has become uh, childish. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just become childish. They're jumping on anything they can, both sides, you know, to go after the other side. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I just don't know why, why Kamala isn't doing better. And, and Jeff, speaking about his friend, may be an idea of why, you well, know. Then, well, no, maybe she is, and we just don't know it yet. Right. Well, then talk about immigrants. We had a solution to the immigrant problem that the Republicans signed off on, and Trump killed it. I got a better. Yeah, we months. told them that. I got a better solution to the immigrant problem: 
Make them all citizens. Yeah. You know? Give them a piece of the American dream and let them go out and get it. You know? I mean, there's a lot of land in Texas. Move them to Texas. It, yeah. it, it does. It, it really doesn't matter. You know, I mean, the, the they've taken this whole. They created. It's called xenophobia, folks. They yep. created a xenophobic situation, in which everybody is afraid of of uh, of of say Mexicans coming up here. Uh, uh, and and storming over the border. And I got to tell you, if you really want to come to this country and you got a little bit of money, uh, you just get on a plane in Mexico City and fly to Los Angeles. Why not? It's, yeah, if, if, if you don't have money, you try to come across the border. Well, just stop the first person you see and ask where I can find one of those black jobs everybody's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Charlie has a black job, don't you, Charlie? Well, yeah, I sure do. <laughs> He's retired. <laughs> well, but I work at my, my umpire job, I guess, is a black oh, that's job. Right. Yeah, that's right. it's a black <laughs> job. Not for long. Not for long. Pretty soon it'll be a Mexican job. Yeah, really. <laughs> we need some more umpires. Come on, bring them down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I just imagine myself if, you know, Obama as a candidate, for example, had said these things or pulled these stunts, you know, I'm riding around in a garbage truck because America is a garbage country, you know, like, oh, listen, what uh, remember, what's his, what's his name couldn't go windsurfing without losing the election. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, who was it? Uh, um, Dukakis in a in a tank that ruined the election yeah. for him. Yeah. And and Trump in a garbage truck should sink his fate right now. But no, <laughs> hey, we love those guys. This guy's a real. Right? This guy's a real man. Then how come he's crying all the time? Yeah, he's still bitching about the twenty twenty election. Yeah. And he, if you ask him long enough, he'll go back and hit bitch about Hillary as though she's some yeah. kind of contender. Which... I don't know. You know, it's just this guy in a garbage truck, you know, with his vest and all. I mean, this is a guy who I can almost certainly guarantee you has never carried a bag of garbage to the outside garbage yeah. can a single time in his entire life. You, Ever. Could bet, you could bet on that. I mean, you know, so... I mean, let's. I mean, let's not act like he has, because we know that he hasn't. So he can ride around in the brand new clean garbage truck all he wants, you know, because America is apparently a garbage can, and he's going to take out the trash for us. But it's a joke, and I mean, I don't know. We'll see Tuesday, but I hope that. I hope the polls are off by more than we think they might be and we all get well here's what's happened with i read a thing about the polls today oh. and the reason why trump may be leading in some of the polls is that the mm. pollsters had egg on their face the last time we had an election because they underestimated trump or uh, the two two elections ago they underestimated trump oh. And they also underestimated him in the last election. He did actually better than they thought, than the, his, their polls said he would do. So what they've done is they've adjusted the polls now to make the Trump factor much more positive. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the pollsters trying to save their asses this time. I think part of the problem with polling right now is everybody has a cell phone. And although my cell phone phone number is the San Francisco area code, if I move to Los Angeles, I'll probably keep that cell phone number. And so trying to track people down that are that you're trying to get their opinion in a certain neighborhood, say a Republican neighborhood or a Democrat neighborhood, is pretty hard to do when most people nowadays that have cell phones don't have home phones anymore. You also have to have a listed phone number. That's another thing. Yeah. I don't. Is there is there a listing for yeah. cell phone numbers? Yeah. You can get on the internet and look for some of it. Yes, you got to get on the internet. Yeah. You know, so you dial up a neighborhood that's filled with Republicans, mm -hmm. but you don't you don't know who you're getting on a cell phone. Yeah, right. And that's why I think that, that I think it's a lot more difficult to poll people. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. 
On a quick note here, uh, anybody have any opinion about the Dodgers winning the uh, mm. World Series? I, I, I sort of got kicked in the teeth on on our, on the, uh, uh, earlier today. I, I made a, I made a comment on this group chat, and I'll leave the names out, but it's has to do with the intersection. And um, <laughs> I said. <laughs> Imagine this, me making a comment. I said something to the group. It's only five or six of us. I said something. I said, ah, uh, you know, the the uh, the the uh, the Yankees are from New York and Trump's from New York, two losers. And then I said, you know, the Dodgers are from California and Kamala's from California, two winners. And one of the people <laughs> that happens to live in New York, I didn't even think that she was a, a Yankees fan. Had a yeah. you know put out something nasty to me, and uh, whatever you know, mm. uh, I was just joking around, and you know I didn't realize she was that. I, I guess I didn't even realize that she would have been a a uh, a Yankees fan. I missed that, so I rather wasn't on the show when she was talking about it or something. Well, my friend Shecky, my, my friend Shecky would be mourning today if he were alive because he was the biggest Yankees fan. Yeah. He was I'm just not. a major. I am too. Uh, I would tend to go with the Dodgers only because I'm from the West Coast. Well, so you I know. mean, we we got people that live in Cleveland without naming names. They get on Amy's show, and are, are, I'm sure they're listening right now. That uh, didn't like the Yankees either. Wanted the Dodgers to win. So, uh, you know, I didn't mean to piss her off. Uh, the person in Amy's group that's in this chat. But I, I was just trying to be a little sarcastic. We don't, we also don't know. We do know the Yankees are losers this year, and we do know the Dodgers are winner. What we don't know is will Kamala win or will Trump win? And I was just being myself. Well, I, I I took it as a joke. I wasn't. It was by. a joke. So. <laughs> I think the Dodgers and the Yankees are going to play again in ten years. I well, next year. You want to take a bet on which team wins? I'll take the bet right now. <laughs> sure. Everybody out there is going to hear that we're going to bet a nickel on this game. It's uh, easy. I'll have to, yeah, yeah, a, a, a dollar. And if I lose, uh, I'll take the Dodgers, California. You're 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 closer to the Yankees, although you may not like them. And uh, mm -hmm. if the Yankees win, I'll mail you your money. Thank Actually, you. I'll come out and visit you and give you the money, and I'll hand it to you. <laughs> Well, I, we'll get on the game. Yeah, we'll watch go. it. Absolutely. But I, uh, you know, I remember that that uh, there used to be a a team that was in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. And then they moved to L.A. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there were yeah, two teams that over. moved. There were two teams that moved to the two West Coast. That's right. And the re you know why there were two? Because the Dodgers wanted to move to California. And they didn't want to move to California without having another team out there that would yeah. move the focus to the West Coast. If they just moved out there, they'd be all there by themselves. Yep. So mm -hmm. they pay, literally paid the Giants to leave New York. Because remember, the Giants were one of the teams in New York at the time. Right. And the Giants went to San Francisco. Yeah. And that immediately made this a whole country. Because when yep. I was growing up as a kid in San Francisco, we never even cared about baseball. We didn't pay attention to it. Yeah. That was something that happened east of the Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, and once they came to San Francisco and Los Angeles, you now had to look across the whole country to see all the teams. And these were one of them, at least the the, the uh, Yankees or excuse me, the Dodgers were a uh, really big team. Giants, not so much. I agree. Uh, but uh, th that's what happened, and we got a baseball team, and all of a sudden there was baseball out there. But when I was growing mm -hmm. up, what did we have? We had the San Francisco um, Seals, right? Seals, the Seals. Mm -hmm. uh, they were a, what do you call it, club? Uh, you know. Double A or triple A or something? Minor league team. Minor league team. Yep. Uh, that was. They also had people in that team kind of training them to be major baseball players. Uh, Joe DiMaggio came out of the San Francisco Seals, I believe. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it was, uh, you know, that's all we had. 
we had Kizar Stadium, this little wimpy stadium out in Golden Gate Park where the games were played. It's and that still was, there. Yeah. But that was it, you yeah. know. So that was that was how the best we did. So anyway, you know. So hmm. so the uh, 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 you know. It, but now we have, of course, <laughs> we have teams in Las Vegas for crying out loud. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. the Oakland A's played their last game a month ago in Oakland. Now they're while the stadium is being built, they're 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 going to play. At a minor league field in Sacramento for two years. Hmm? For two years, it's gonna take two that years. long. Wow. My brother-in-law follows them, and that's what he told me. So I don't, I don't follow baseball. You know that. So, yeah, yeah. I don't follow any sports. As a matter of fact, I just it was news that you know that the Yankees won. You know, I mean the Dodgers won. Anyhow, but yeah, they're supposed to be two years in. I'm like, why didn't they renegotiate with Oakland for those two years? Oakland could use the money, and I don't know. Oakland, yeah, won't, I mean, build, Oakland won't build them another stadium. I don't blame them. But, well, um, you know, I, I agree. We have a we have a friend, uh, 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 Josh, of course, knows him as well, and you know him from the show in the past. Sometimes he calls one, maybe once a year. Uh, jo- uh, um, Patrick Blazik. Who resents the idea that these baseball teams require the cities they're in to build them a ballpark? I agree with him. I agree with Patrick. You know? Uh, And I agree with him. Absolutely agree with him. But yet, you know, a, a place like Vegas will spend a fortune to bring a baseball team to their city. And they say, we're building you the ballpark and everything like that, you know? And it's yours to play in, to use, to sell popcorn in and all of that and the seats to it and everything else. And all we yeah. want out of you is the business coming to town. Utah. Well, I, somebody told me the Raiders who recently moved there are not doing as good as they thought they would be. I think there's not a lot of permanent people that live there. Why would still- anybody want to watch a football game in Vegas? Right. That's right. You know, you go to Vegas to do what? Gamble. You go Gamble. there for yeah, you go get there. laid with some and strange. fancy shows. You, you go there. You go there for shows. the gambling and the hookers. Okay. Absolutely. Jeff Jeff brought up number three, the shows too. The shows. I mean, they they have some high profile one off games there that I can understand, like college football playoffs and things like that. I mean, I can understand some of those destination type games, but I I do have a hard time understanding the baseball, you know, that will be moved there. Cause I mean, it's every night and it's a long year and it's kind of boring at times. The team isn't very good. You know I mean? It's, well, what teams move, what strange. teams moved to Vegas? The giants moved to Vegas. Uh, no, the Oakland Raiders oh, moved there for the football Raiders, and the, the Oakland, Raiders. the Oakland athletics, the A's are moving the there, yeah. but not until the they, they're not going to start playing there until their stadium is ready, but that's going to be another, I don't know, two years or something like that. But they can't play in the Raiders stadium. That's a big stadium. It's probably empty most no, of the time. No, it was built. That was a, that's an inside stadium that was built for, it's basically football only the way it was built. Right. I mean, it can do other like concerts and things, I think, you know, but not, yeah. not set up to be converted to, to baseball. Yeah. Well, why can't you? I don't, I don't know they- the way it was laid out. I don't know the dimensions. You know, and, and plus Las Vegas doesn't care. They're well, they're able to build another stadium just for baseball. Yeah, yeah, but I just don't understand why a team would want to move to Las Vegas. It just doesn't. Oh, I make agree sense. with that. Yeah, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Well, no, the Raiders I, I love to move. They moved from they were they started in Oakland, then they moved to Los Angeles, then they came back to Oakland. Now, if it, let's be honest though, is not the major reason why football is so popular gambling. Not for me. No, I don't know. I, I know shit tons of people that don't bet anything. Well, all I'm saying is, is is the whole gambling industry has been based on the fact that these football games exist. You well, know? I mean, they have their hand in it hugely. Like, if we oh, now, if we yeah. suddenly said, you know what, we to begin with, what I want them to do is take these goddamn ads off TV. <laughs> they don't for, for fan duel and things like that. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, this is gambling. This is not a healthy thing. All right? And it shouldn't be advertised on broadcasting. And there are some, you know, this has come, become such a big business, this gambling thing, mm -hmm. that radio stations, there are radio stations now that are nothing but sports gambling radio stations. In San Francisco, one of the sports stations changed to that format. And all day long, they just talk about odds. You know, why, why bring the Raiders there and why bring the A's there? Because you can go into any casino, any major casino, and go to the sports book area and bet on them there. Yeah. Watch the games live on these, you know, 90-foot screens or whatever yeah. they are, you know? I don't, mm -hmm. Not a sports person. I'm not the one with the sports. But enemy. while we're still here together, why don't we talk about Elon Musk? Huh, oh, Okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're trying to sue him. They're trying to charge him with this illegal betting thing. This uh, illegal he's know, running lottery. a lottery, and he's not, what do you go, zoned for a lottery. He can't. He doesn't care, though. They're, they'll fine him $100,000. He'll say, that's fine, thank you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and move on. I can only imagine the outrage if, you know, like, George Soros were to come out and be yeah. like, you, you sign a petition to get a new district attorney who doesn't believe in the death penalty, I'll give you a million bucks. <laughs> oh, okay. They lose their mind. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, it must, but Musk has this going on on one side, but you know what happened today? He got a deal with the United States government to build spy satellites. Mm hmm. What yeah. what is what's with this government? One minute they they hate one side of him and they love the other side of him. That's true. They hate they hate him personally, but the businesses he's he's developing are they love the money billions of dollars. Yeah, you know Tesla, SpaceX. SpaceX is not public. Tesla's public, publicly <laughs> traded. But he's got a a company called Boring. And they bore tunnels for underground trains well, that's from pretty well, that's, that's pretty well gone now. Oh, it, is it? Yeah, it, okay. it didn't work out too well. Uh, it was a good yeah. idea. It was a good train, idea. The train kept running into the wall at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I haven't followed it, but you know, Musk is a Musk is a fascist and a threat to national security. Oh, absolutely. Doing any business with him anyway. Yep. And if they are, I'm sure it's probably so that they can keep a close watch on him and steal his technology, or at least I don't know. No, but I yeah. think I think the main reason is they're they're really afraid of him. You know, I mean, he's got the technology now they need to win wars. Yep. And yep. and so what do you do? Do you, what do you do? You want to piss this guy off, or do you want to suddenly do business, keep doing business with him? So part of us wants to do business with him, and part of us wants to sue him. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. It's uh, you know, and he in the in the process, I think is beginning to feel that nobody can touch him. He 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 ruined Twitter. He took Twitter, for and bought it for. You know, way more than but it was listen, ever worth. You couldn't ruin and he ruined it. it. Twitter was ruined on its own. Well, I don't know. I wasn't on it, so I'm happy he bought it because he got to waste all that money and take that thing into the dumper. Yep. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, certainly he didn't buy it as a as a, uh, um, a money making prog no. process. You know, and we well, fired three quarters of the staff. Right. Yeah. And it's nothing but a right wing mouthpiece now. That's Absolutely. all it is. Yeah. And he yeah. said he was buying it to make it a real open market for thoughts and ideas. You know. Oh, geez. Well, I don't think a normal person wants to have anything to do with him. You know. And uh, but he's he's uh, he's I think he is a danger in many respects because he does have the technology. You know. And he has brains. He has brains and money, and those are dangerous things oh. in one person. Although I think if he does too much, he's going to start hurting. Because, I, uh, you know, I, none of us are going to buy Teslas, are we? Nope. You know, I would have at one point, but not now. 
you know, and and um, uh, you know, SpaceX. I love SpaceX. I love everything they do. I love how they fold it off, and I don't think Musk is responsible for that, but he certainly is the money behind it. You know, it's the brains in the company that are doing all the magic, uh, and he ain't that kind of magician. He's nope. he's far from it. He made his money two ways. I mean, first way was his father was very wealthy billionaire yep. from South Africa. And he came here. And the first company he started up, a lot of us use it, PayPal. Yep. Was it was he PayPal? I didn't remember. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah. he developed PayPal with a partner. That partner and him started Tesla. Yeah. You know? And uh, I, I, I'm not sure what goes beyond that, but there, there are videos that show you the Tesla plant. But where did he get the $220 billion? I don't know. I mean... He got them from uh, SpaceX and Tesla, I believe. That's when he started probably, being... But the only, the only money he makes off SpaceX is what the government gives him to develop it. Right. Yeah. You know? Tesla, a lot of people... That's are making money for him. I, I'm sure where Charlie's at, you're seeing more and more Teslas. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place in the Bay Area. I mean, they build them right here in Fremont. Yeah, but I think the people who are on the left wing could not in good conscience buy a Tesla now. Just like my father when was almost apoplectic when right after the war I bought a Volkswagen. <laughs> You know, and I went, D Dad. They're not. They're not owned by Hitler anymore. <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, I don't. You know, a, a lot of people want it. It's it's a novelty. It's an electric car. It's yeah, but there are a lot of electric cars now. Nowadays, yeah. <laughs> and a lot, and some of them, like GM and Ford, have bought uh, the rights to use Tesla technology. Mm -hmm. You get a Ford car or truck. It's battery powered. Where do you charge it at? At a Tesla charging station. Yeah. Yeah. Or are you not allowed to use a Tesla charging station unless you've got a Tesla? No. Ford and General Motors signed a contract with Tesla to be yeah. able to use their charging stations. Yeah. yeah. And they both bought technology from them to help build their electric cars. <laughs> I think in 10 years, probably 50% of the cars out there are going to be electric. They're learning how to build uh, semi trucks with it, yeah. And, and yeah, you know, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's fine. That's but of, what, what were you gonna say, Charlie? I was that's because a hundred years from now, we know there's not gonna be any gas powered cars because there won't be any more petroleum left. Right. The good thing so is we're gonna have to have them. electric cars. That's the only kind of cars you're gonna have. Yep. Aren't there other options though? Hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah. Although, if you listen to Trump, hydrogen will blow up. It can. Yeah. He's such an idiot. <laughs> well, I'm surprised Trump doesn't want to uh, uh, supply our cars with nuclear power. Yeah. You your own nuclear reactor in every car, you know? Yeah. Well, we can't do that. That's not possible. I don't know. They can power ships and submarines with it. You yeah, never know. Yeah. yeah, I don't think maybe people are going to buy. Uh, nuclear powered cars. I just don't. <laughs> that accident on the freeway. Yeah, I, I have yeah, a whole really. new meaning. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Uh, they 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 Tesla uh, trained the fire departments around the Bay Area how to fight a Tesla fire, which is yeah. basically hundreds or thousands of lithium ion batteries yeah. connected together that make up this battery pack, and uh, apparently water puts out you know, the, the, the lithium. So they just fight it like a regular fire. But my question is, I mean, uh, do we really, do we, do we, are they that dangerous, uh, lithium ion batteries in these cars? Well, the and if they are, why don't they make an electric car where the, well, in fact, you know, Trump, uh, Elon Musk rather, or Trump, uh, Elon Musk was saying that he was going to go hydrogen. Uh, which would be a sm much smarter mm. idea, and believe it or not, less dangerous. <clears throat> you know, but lithium-ion batteries are a, are a real problem. You know. Yeah, hydrogen is dangerous in its own way too. So. 
So what can we do that isn't dangerous? We can go back to the Stanley Steamer. Bicycles, that? bicycles, uh, yeah. Flintstone, Flintstone cars. You know, when we started out automobiles. It was a thing called it was a thing called the Stanley Steamer, and the Stanley Steamer was powered by what? A steam engine. Water. Yep. Yeah, it was a steam engine. And if you got a runaway steam engine, you better get off it and run. <laughs> you know, but apparently it didn't didn't catch on. You know, a lot of the trains were built that way too. Absolutely. Oh, all trains were built that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. You all, 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 all the, those trains were. Boiler. If you look at the early trains, all they were were a giant boiler. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you simply, you know, you put the wood in there, and you got the water wood boiling, and, and yeah. it was—they were very powerful. They could—they could drag a great deal of uh, lo a big load. You know? yeah. and, and they would have to stop. Hmm? They'd have to stop when they're running out of energy. Out of water, yeah. And they'd have to add extra. Yeah, but uh, you stop some every so often. There was a big tank. Big water and, tower. And a big yeah. water tower, and you pull the thing over, and you just pump the water into the car, uh, and the train went right. really fast into the train. And then you, uh, you know, it went into the boiler, and uh, you heated it up with the wood, and uh, off you went. You know, but. Uh, then we came out with diesel trains, but that was too polluting. So then yeah. they came out with diesel electric, which is yep. what a lot of trains run on now. It's. Low, I don't know. They make the diesel so it's well. Low. They were, no, they run electric because the rails are electric, right? No diesel, diesel. No, no. Well, wait a minute. Oh. The, it, 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 there are some trains. That, for instance, they're the ones that run well, in the subways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The maglev, the really fast ones, run yeah. on electricity. But you know, actually, out they here, run. The they, trains they, run on they, two tracks. They run a some something else, if I remember correctly. Maglevs work by changing constantly. It, it pushes the train ahead by changing the magnetic uh, flux yeah. or whatever. That's right. It's so, so that positive, it, negative, positive, positive negative, negative, positive, starts negative. A, yeah, it and those starts a, a forward force. And, and those those things go quick. like 153, 200 miles an hour. Except for they run with electricity, the maglev. So In somebody's fact, got to generate the electricity. Marjorie took a maglev uh, down to Shanghai, I think, when she was in from China. New York. No, yeah, from yeah. New York, <laughs> from uh, from uh, Beijing. Oh. Yeah, and she got down there. She said she can't believe how fast it was. Yeah, you know. No. Yeah. So and and they're not dangerous at all. And uh, they're uh, why we don't have them in this country. Well, I'll tell you why we don't have them in this country. Because oh. we don't build them. Because we don't go for oil that kind companies. of stuff. And the oil, the oil companies, companies want to sell oil. They don't That's want right. to. That's <laughs> right. I mean, we should we should be having we should be having a rail system where I can leave New York, and within something like uh, a 40, 24 hours, be in California, if not faster. Yeah. If so, well, my daughter when she was in Amsterdam would go all over Europe on these high speed trains. It was it, it was nothing to go from you know. Brussels to uh, yeah, and she got, the, or, she got the fastest yeah. ones because she had daddy's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's it really you know they really work very well and they're yeah. uh, you know they're uh, if we had had it and it was two hundred mile an hour let's say it's yeah. how many miles to California three thousand how, fa yeah. how fast could you get there? That's fifteen hours. Fifteen hours. And yeah. here in California, who wants to take a plane when you can take a train, which mm. I don't know if you've taken a train lately, but they're certainly far more comfortable than a plane. They sure are. Oh, yeah. You know, I would be happy to take an 18-hour plane trip with a place to sleep on the train, you know, and so on yeah. and so forth. And uh, just real meals instead of peanuts. That's yeah. right. You don't have to fight for the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, taking an airplane, I mean, I, we're going, what, in a week from now, uh, and I'm dreading it, you know, because I just, uh, it, flying, which used to be, hey, it's kind of fun and a pleasure, and, mm -hmm. you know, hey, we're going to go flying, right? 
Remember those days, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Everybody got dressed up in suits. Do you remember that? <laughs> That's true. And People they, smoking uh, cigarettes all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, right. they, they, and they had things called wait. They had the stewardesses. Well, yeah. And, and the stewardesses were at your beck and call. They were like your harem, you know. And uh, and you think can I get you a, can I get you a moist towelette? I think that was uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and, give and, me another five minutes. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was it was a wonderful time on a plane, but not anymore. I mean, it's it just getting onto the plane is is a yeah. ta really real task. <laughs> You know, I got to go through TSA and take, I don't have to take off my shoes anymore because I've got uh, uh, that one of those TSA passes. Marjorie hasn't Clear. gotten, Marjorie hasn't gotten hers yet, but I've gotten mine. Clear? No, not clear. The other one. Oh, the other TSA. One. Yeah. Uh, I'll get clear the next time I go. There's a better one than clear, actually, I'm told. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't flown in ten years. I haven't yeah. flown since COVID, so I don't. I don't like flying. Yeah. Well, we're we're we're, we're you know. So anyway, so I uh, I don't have to take off my shoes, and I don't have to they show my electronics or anything like how, that. How so. long are you in the air between New York and and Paris? Uh, uh, all of uh, let me see here. Um, uh, all of how long are we gonna be in the air? Mm. Oh, we're going to be in the air probably six hours, maybe. Mm, that's not bad. Yeah, I think it's six hours. If it I remember five right. to get from coast to coast here. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, it's six hours, I think, to, to Paris. That's yeah, a good book. Marjorie wanted to get, like, you know, business class. And it was like $200. It was, it was a, at least $1,000, $1,500 more for each of us. And I said to her, it's only a six-hour flight. You know, it's not like we're going to China. If we were going to China, man, I'd put us in first class, you know, mm -hmm. just to be able to not have to bear any real problems, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I, for a six-hour flight, I, why am I going to put myself in, in business class? Yeah. To be what, pampered? No, so we've got it. We've got advanced uh, coach or something, some special upgrade of coach so, mm. i think actually we're sitting by the door which in a boeing plane is not a good idea no you know so do you know which boeing plane you're taking i don't know i don't know if it's a boeing i assume it is oh. but you know i wouldn't have assumed well most most planes that are flying today believe it or not are boeing mm. i don't know yeah you know see a lot of airbus in the air so i would say your chances are pretty good you know that you're going to be flying in a in a Boeing. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, let me uh, go to uh, C-SPAN right now. You can watch Kamala Harris's rally from Las Vegas. Oh, really? Oh, see, that's that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but before that, you get to see Jennifer Lopez. Oh, really? Well, she's, really? Oh, she's really? she's not going to sing either, is she? I don't know. You know. Anyway, I wasn't too concerned. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, because you had Beyonce and she didn't sing. She didn't sing. I don't care about that. Yeah, mm. You know, uh, but anyway, <laughs> oh boy, another wonderful night with you guys. I appreciate it. I really do. Um, and we had a lot to talk about and we talked about a lot of different stuff. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Jeff, for joining us. Appreciate it. And thank, thank you, you to Alan as well. Uh, Charlie, thank you. And Josh, always a pleasure. And and by the way, there's no Amy after us. She isn't on for the rest of the week. So these guys are like orphans, you know. So. Yeah. That's why they're here. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for uh, calling. I give a big uh, wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, there'll be uh, more citizen panel and people like that and so on tomorrow night right here. Uh, same time, same station in life. So in the meantime, if you see her, as always, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.